But the true believers are those when Allah's name is remembered, their hearts tremble and fear is struck in their heart. Not the ones that when they remember Allah, they start dancing and they start singing. The ones that when they remember Allah, their hearts tremble without, without any option. This is how Allah Azza wa made it. These are the true believers. Only the true believers are those. These people, they dance in the name of Allah Azza wa They sing in the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And we will see what else they do in the name of Allah Jalla Jalalu. Another one of their bid'ah is the repetition, the repetition of Lafdul Jalala. Allah, Allah, who, who, who. You know the ayah? Allahu la, uh, Allahu la ilaha illa who. Right? The Surah Al Hashr. It comes twice in a row, right? هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس الأخري. So they catch the word what who, which is the pronoun he, and they substitute that for the name of Allah. So they say who 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 and Allah Allah Allah, which really, if you think about it logically, it does it doesn't make sense. If if your name was Ahmed. And I say, Ahmed, 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 Ahmed. Soon enough, Ahmed will take off his shoe and he will smack me with it. <laughs> and if he did, I wouldn't be upset with him. What do you want, man? You know, naturally, what do you want? Yes, I'm Ahmed. What? What? Uh, if I said, Ahmed is nice, that'll be a meaningful sentence, right? Ahmed, help me, that'll be a meaningful sentence. Uh, any, uh, anything would be acceptable, but just to repeat, Ahmed. Does it make sense? Now when we remember Allah, when you say Subhanallah, does it mean something? It's a full meaning. It's a complete sentence. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. La hawla wa la quwata la billah. Every one of them is a meaningful, profound statement. But to repeat the name of Allah Azza wa Jal endlessly, for hours they do it, sometimes thousands of times, does not make any sense. And it is me, it is a mean of degrading and belittling the majesty of Allah. By calling him, calling him and not saying what you want. But that's what they do. And one of the du'at, he went to Zaytuna Institute, which is ran by Hamza Yusuf, one of the biggest, you know, very, very prominent speakers in the English world. Many people don't know. They listen to Hamza Yusuf. He has some good and bad, like everybody else. He has some good and bad. But in his Zaytuna Institute, it's a college, which, you know, they teach Islamic, uh, you know, uh, material. One of the du'at went to advise him, went to their, his school and he found the poor students, the students in the class sitting there saying Allah, 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 Allah endlessly. You wouldn't think that's the case? That is the case. And the manhaj of the, if you go to zaytunainstitute.org on the website, they teach Al-Qasida, Al-Burda, this, this poem which includes shirk. And we will deal with it later. This is part of their manhaj that they teach to the students. There's no doubt about the deviance of such behavior. The Sufis recite love poems mentioning the names of women and boys, sometimes in their Qasida, and they use words like desire, lust, love, passion, different kind of stuff, not very common, but it is there as well. Uh, some Sufis pierce themselves with rods of iron. They, some of them put glass, they walk on it. You know like the magicians pull these stunts? They do the same thing. And I've seen this again with my own eyes. They, you know, some of them will put, uh, one guy will actually go, he goes around with like what, what looks like a knife. It's like a rod. And then people are dancing in the middle of the dhikr. And you, you know, then he will come and he will put it in his neck. Like this. And the person will start bleeding and he's still happy, you know, dancing around. Then he'll go to the neck. He's just stabbing people around, right? And everybody's like happy, okay, finally I got my share. You know, everybody's bleeding around. Who does it remind you of? Who does that remind you of? Shia. Shia, you see pictures of children, two-year-old children with his head cut in, in half with a sword. You know, because you know, they're Hassan and Hussein and... Shirk, shirk, not Islam. Wallahi, not Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. And Allah said, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ Yeah, they, they, they get this done with the aid of the shayateen. Just like David Copperfield and many other of these magicians, they do actual magic. Now we believe in magic in Islam. We believe someone can disappear from here with the help of the jinn and the shayateen. We have no doubt. It's not trickery. It's not just, you know, tricks uh, that, you know, like the people cannot see. We believe in magic. Magic is something that we don't deny. It's shirk, it's kufr, it will throw you outside of Islam, but it does exist. 
So we don't doubt that someone will make a helicopter disappear with the help of the jinn. It is possible because Allah gave the jinn such authority and power as means of testing them. And we know if you read the Quran, you see what happened with Sulaiman. The jinn used to do all kinds of things for, things for him that human beings could not do. Even the throne of, of you know, the uh, Balqis, you know, he, they were able to bring it from, from a huge distance. Afritun min al-jinn. So we don't doubt. We don't doubt. So yes, the Sufis may do this with the help of the shayateen. And Allah said, whoever turns away from the remembrance of Allah, we will assign for him a devil, so he will become his close companion. And yes, they will be able to pull all kinds of stunts that the common people will think is actually some amazing, you know, uh, guidance from Allah. The Sufis claim to have what is known as Nasis or knowledge of the unseen. Some of them say, you know, I remember, I read this also myself, the, the Mufti of Syria back then, I'm not able to recall his name right now, very famous, very famous. He said, he told the story how he met the Sheikh. Then when, when, he, when he first met the Sheikh, the, when he first came in, the Sheikh said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. You know, can you imagine? He go to, you know, your manager at work for the first time. He said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. Ahmed Mustafa, you were born, you were born in the year 1972. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're like, oh my God, you know, what is this guy? This is, you know, this is person, it's a psychic? Yeah, with the jinn. With the jinn. They believe that they, the, their Sufi masters, they know the present, past, future, they know everything. They know everything. And he will narrate to you a bunch of stuff. Like, just like, you know, palm reading and all this uh, fortune telling and the horoscopes, it's the same idea. Integrated, you'll find that Sufism have picked up some from Hinduism and some from the Greek philosophy and some from the Christianity. They've picked up their religion from a number of places, you know, mumbo jumbo kind of thing, put them all together in one and they called it Sufism. And they have the nerve to call people to it and they call anyone who doesn't like them Wahhabi. And on their websites, you go to the website, you see the tab, they have Aqidah, Sira, Fiqh, Wahhabism. You know? So, so, you know, that's part of the thing. It's part of the thing because if they don't warn against the other people, right? If they don't warn against them, then basically they will lose their audience. So the first thing that they do is that they warn people from the religion, from, from any other person. And any other person who's not a Sufi is automatically a Wahhabi. Whether he follows Muhammad Abdul Wahhab or he doesn't, that doesn't matter. If he's not a Sufi, he's a Wahhabi. So this is their, the way they do it. They scare the people away. Because they're afraid that they will lose their audience. The Sufis claim that Allah created the world for the sake of Muhammad wasallam. This is a very common practice among the average Muslim in the masjid in Saudi Arabia. That Allah created the dunya and the heavens and the earth for the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And that this was written on the throne. And that, you know, the first thing Allah created was the light of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And that he is the perfect man. Some of the Sufis say that the Prophet wasallam has the attributes of Allah has the attributes of Allah, he is the perfect man and perfect divine being in one. So the, to them, the Messenger of Allah is better than Allah. A'udhu Billah. And this is a very common belief among many people that have been inf influenced by the Sufis without even knowing. Without even knowing. They believe that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah created the dunya for his sake. And Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we were, Allah only created the, the everything, the jinn and the ins, and the dunya for them, so that they may worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the Prophet sallallahu is the best human being Allah ever created. We don't deny that. But Allah did not create the dunya for him. Allah told us why He created the dunya. On the other hand, He said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam,